You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio once again. We are here and yeah, it's that time again. We have another show, another guest. Today, we have a good friend of the show. We have Kaylee Z, who she is going to give us everything about her brand, her life story, everything that we need to know about what she's doing for her community. We're going to learn about what she does. And first and foremost, I want to welcome Kaylee to the show. How you doing? Hi, thanks so much for having me, Shamaya. I'm glad to be here. I know you're busy, so we'll go ahead and get started. I appreciate your time being on the show. First and foremost, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know as a child, you had to go through some diagnosis. Tell us a little bit about your story. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're you're going right to it. Um, I When I was 12 years old, I was diagnosed with MS, multiple sclerosis. And obviously that, you know, changed my entire life and, and changed my childhood, what it meant to be a kid, what it, you know, what it meant to be a kid in school. Uh, a lot of people don't know about MS. So I'll just quickly say that MS is an autoimmune disease. It attacks the uh, brain and spinal cord. It attacks the, the protective covering. It's called the myelin sheath of the nerves in the brain and spinal cord. And because the brain is the supercomputer of the body, anything can happen. So just as an example, you know, I've, I've been in a wheelchair. I've been blind in one eye. I've had cognitive issues, speech issues. I've had times when all my internal organs shut down. So it really can affect uh, any part of the body. You do a lot of coaching uh, currently. You do a lot of different services. You have books out there that people can get on Amazon. Uh, one of them that I saw earlier was Transforming Your Life, Volume 2. As a entrepreneur as a person who uh, is responsible for building your own brand, at what point did you decide, you know, I want to start my own business? You know, it's not even that I decided. It was sort of, it was sort of life decided for me. God showed me. I, um, I guess part, part of me always knew I needed to work for myself. And if I'm being, you know, if, if, if we're really going to go all the way there, I'll say that as a kid, I was very entrepreneurial. After my diagnosis, I started to see that um, my my experience was impacting others, was inspiring others. So about a year after the diagnosis, uh, I, along with some other friends, we started a nonprofit called Youth Against MS. So in a weird way, it's like I, I was an entrepreneur when I was 13, 14 years old. Um, <laughs> um, and so, but again, didn't didn't know what that would mean for my future. And as an adult, I went through an amazing healing journey. Um, and thank God my, my diagnosis was changed and I don't live with active disease today. And I just was really grateful just to be healthy. I didn't see this as anything having to do with a career or I, I didn't know if it would work for others. So I was just happy to go live my healthy life. And it was really others that came to me and asked me to guide them and asked if I would try to see if it would work for them. And sort of, you know, like one at a time, I saw, oh, this works and there's something to this. And um, and so I really feel that God just guided me to this and said, you know, you're you're supposed you're supposed to be coaching and 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 guiding others to health and wellness and sharing your journey. So so that's that's how I got started. When you had to uh, manage your health when you were dealing with MS what are some of the challenges that that kind of woke you up? Like, okay, like I'm gonna have to either deal with this, or I'm gonna have to feel sorry for myself. How did you deal with those challenges at that time? Um, you know, I very rarely had the feeling of feeling sorry for myself, and I think part of it was just being my age. I think kids are kids are very resilient. Maybe it's the kids are very resilient. Maybe that was just my nature. Um, but the, the initial part of the diagnosis process was so, so much uncertainty. I was in the dark for so long. I mean, literally like for 60 days, I didn't open my eyes because of the symptoms uh, that were affecting my vision. So 
I had a lot of quiet time, I had a lot of downtime. And this was, you know, back in the nineties, there wasn't like YouTube to distract me or anything. Um, so I had a lot of, a lot of downtime. And in that time, it was a lot of time for reflection and, and introspection. And, um, I developed a very deep spiritual, uh, relationship or yeah, spiritual experience, a relationship with God. And, um, and really I just was so desperate to get an answer that when I did get the answer, you know, cause of course, it, I, who knows what was going on? I didn't know if it's a brain tumor. I didn't know if I was dying. I didn't know. So once I did have a diagnosis, there was no long, there wasn't really space at that moment for, let me feel bad for myself. It was just like, okay, finally. it was like, it was like relief. Like finally someone's telling me what's going on. I have a direction. I can take medication and, and now, okay, I can, I can move forward with my life. And I had to learn about my body. I had to learn about, you know, disease and what, what the implications were going to be. It was definitely hard, but I really felt, um, I, I, I felt very strongly from a young age that I was going to do my best to still live my life. Um, and interestingly, um, you know, a, a neurologist said to me before I was even diagnosed and I just, you know, had symptoms and they were looking at my brain scans. He said to me, you'll be in a wheelchair by the end of high school. Don't plan on going to college. And, you know, that, that would break plenty of people down. And for me, it lit a fire. It was just like, I'm not going to be that like there's, I'm going to prove him wrong. And that always stayed with me. That always stayed with me. So even in the toughest moments, I was like, no, I am going to, I'm going to walk across the stage in high school and my high school graduation. I'm going to walk across the stage at my college graduation. Like that really fueled me. Um, and always, I always believed that there was purpose in it. I always believe there's a reason me and not someone else. And I think that also really helped me from like that, that also prevented me from kind of going to this place of like, you know, feeling bad for myself as, you know, as you were asking. Once again, listen, I'll be focused radio talking to our guest today, Kaylee Z. Go to her website, KayleeZ.com. Now speeding forward to today as a motiva motivational speaker, a coach, a best-selling author, you're on a mission. And how does it feel to be able to see that you are impacting people's lives when you could have just kind of play it safe and say, you know what, I have every right to just like kind of keep to myself and, you know, just kind of relax. Yeah, it's, um, I'm, I'm so grateful for this life. I'm so grateful that this is how it's all unfolded. I ask for continued, you know, courage every day. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to, to still, um, to still show up in that way. Um, because I, I really, I really, I try to be in integrity with everything. I don't want to just be the motivational speaker that shows up and tries to tell you, you know, oh yeah, be grateful when like, what if I'm having a tough day? I try to be really authentic. And so, um, it's, I, I just, I feel really grateful. I think we're living in one of the toughest times in, in history where, you know, it's so easy to think that there's so much false images coming at us constantly on social media. So we're constantly thinking somebody else has it better. Somebody else is smarter. They're wealthier that we're constantly comparing. Um, and we really have to get in control of our minds and, and know that and believe that we are capable, believe that we are powerful and that we can make the impossible possible and, and, and to live a, a limitless life. And, I think we need people, it's, we're going through such an intense time in history. People need reminders of that. And, and so even on my toughest days, you know, just reminding myself of the impact that I've made and, and that there's, you know, maybe one more life that can change and one more person who will know that they might be, they may have just gotten a diagnosis, um, you know, any type of chronic diagnosis and, and that can be scary and overwhelming. And maybe that person will, hear about me and know they can be healthy and know that there's something else out there and maybe they'll find me. So I just have to keep reminding myself of that. Does that make sense? Yes. And matter of fact, I want to go uh, further with your statement that you said earlier about getting control of the mind, because that's very interesting. And uh, commenting on what you mentioned about uh, 
everything that is going on nowadays. I mean, technology, news cycles, social media, what have you. There's always images and graphics and text and all this audio, everything that kind of takes our attention. It, it just, boom. It's like as soon as you wake up, the first thing you do is check your phone. Did someone send that email that I was waiting for yesterday? You know, check your social media. Did so-and-so like my stuff? It's crazy. Like, when it comes to controlling your mind, you started that when you were younger going through your diagnosis. Explain to the audience, based on your own experience, how focusing on controlling your mind has benefited not just your health, but just your outlook on life. Oh, wow. <laughs> so my, I could talk for hours on that. Um, you know, when we, uh, we, we have a new thought every second. And if we don't direct the mind, it, it will naturally go to the scariest places because the, sub, the job of the subconscious is to protect us. So how does it protect you? It's constantly assessing any threat, any risk, any potential danger. You just let your mind wander it's a scary reality. <laughs> it's going to be a very overwhelming, stressful, terrifying day. It's going to be a terrifying hour if you just let your mind wander. Um, and so we, when we can get in control of our minds, we choose what to focus on. And I'm not talking, you know, Pollyanna, I'm pretending that everything's okay. No, we, you could be in reality and then you can say, you know what, that is scary or I am disappointed um, or, you know, I am nervous about this upcoming deadline or, or change in my life. And also I'm going to take a few minutes to focus on every time things have worked out for me. Um, everything I do have to be grateful for. You know what, if that does happen, what are my resources? Let me look at my support system. We have to choose to do that. Your mind is not going to naturally do that. People always say like, wow, you're so resilient. They're so amazed by me. And I'm always like frustrated by that. Like this takes hard work. People don't just wake up this way. Um, so you have to be the person that doesn't just, you use, you gave a perfect example, Shamaya, like you wake up, you check your phone. You can't do that. You can't do that. Go to sleep with the phone in another room, use a different alarm clock, wake up, focus on gratitude for waking up that day. Focus on everything that's working out, everything you have to be grateful for. Your body's working. You can see maybe even just great, grateful for the sheets or the good weather that day. If we can start to direct our mind that way, the, the way the brain works is that um, it will continue to create more connections for what you, for what it thinks you need. So if you, it's like exercise, right? So the first day you, you might do a squat, the first time someone does a squat, they may not really be doing it right. They kind of have to learn how to do it. After that, it's muscle memory. No problem. I know how to do a squat, right? So you, you can train your brain to then lean towards the positive, focus on gratitude, focus on resourcefulness. Um, if you train it, you have to train it. So I'll just say one more thing. Sorry, I know I'm, I'm talking a lot. I'll say one more thing. You know, anybody who horseback rides, you know that you're the rider, you're holding the reins. If I pull the reins, let's say if I'm steering the horse to the right, but I'm looking to the left, the horse is not going to go to the right. <laughs> Because the horse knows I'm looking to the left, right? So I have to be I have to be very clear on where I'm directing, and and that's in, that that has to be also with my own mind. So that's first. And second, if I'm not clear with the horse and I'm just I'm not directing, I'm looking all over the place. The horse is going to go where it wants to go. Our mind is the same way. If the horse wants survival, it's going to go for where am I safe? Where's their food? <laughs> that's what the brain's going to do, right? So I, as a, as a horseback rider, I have to direct the horse. We have to do the same with our mind. I have to direct my mind. What, what am I going to focus on for the next 10 minutes? What do I want? Like, even with social media, you know, I can choose what comes up in my newsfeed. You know, do I want to see everybody else who's seemingly, I'm putting this in quotes, even though you can't see my air quotes, seemingly living this extravagant life. I just want you to know, by the way, most of that's very fake. Or do I want to be seeing stories of inspiration every day? You know, so I can choose what, what comes into my brain. And then that trains my brain to, to develop more neural pathways, more nerve cells. They're also called nerve cells to 
do that natu- more naturally, more automatically day after day. So you can actually train that. And quite frankly, I don't know how I would be the person I am today to have accomplished what I accomplished it. Even with my clients, I work with clients with a whole range of symptoms. People come to me in really, really tough situations. I have to constantly inundate myself with stories of health and healing and that the impossible became possible so that I can hold space that that's possible for them. I have to constantly do that for my own brain. So we have to control our input and our output with our mind. Does that make sense? Yeah, because I mean, first, foremost, uh, the horse analogy metaphor is good because uh, I had two experience uh, riding a horse. One was in mm. sixth grade uh, camp and then another when I was a little bit older, uh, <clears throat> well, a lot more older when I was an adult. And I rode a horse, a horse uh and my brother, we, we were at this like little ranch thing. It was it was awesome because sixth grade camp, I don't know what the heck I was doing. I was just like horse jumping the air. I said, All right, I'm done. I'm never, ever gonna be on a horse again. Yeah. I got scared. I was only in sixth grade, so understandable. Oh, but when I got older, yeah, yeah. we learned that, right? And then corrected that issue. And like you said, mm. the horse kind of knows what you're doing or not doing. And if you don't direct it, it will basically just kind of like roam around. So I like that because you didn't even know this, but you might have known this. But I even have a, I'm not trying to do a shameless plug here, but I have a free ebook on armyfocusradio.com. And it's two, but I'm just going to say one because it got to do with what we're talking about. And it has a lot to do with the mind. It's called Harnessing the Power of the Mind. The guide to manifesting your reality with choices. So that's the that's the curveball because everyone thinks like taboo when you say manifesting, and it's like you got to look at it from in context, right? Yeah. What yeah. I wrote the book, it was basically just about I'm Trucks Radio, the show. That's why the logo's on the front cover. And it's funny that you talked about the mind uh, in great detail the way you did because that's what it's about. When you have self-awareness, when you reframe your old negative thoughts, when you focus on positive affirmation, whether you're a person of faith or whatever, when you use, uh, when you try to visualize what you're trying to do in life, like for instance, let's just make it simple. Let's not make it weird and awkward. <laughs> if you decide you want to have some tacos today, yeah, of course. I don't yeah. know if of I'm hungry. You want tacos today? You see what I'm saying? Not trying to make people hungry, but it's like. If you think about something, you're going to realize, oh, man, I got to have some tacos or I got to have my favorite place, X, Y, Z. Right. That's part of the whole, I mean, that's very simple, but I'm just saying that's part of the process. You have to visualize yourself to do something. Like if you are an entrepreneur and your passion is cars, you want to customize cars, you want to have all this great stuff. Well, you have to visualize yourself doing that first. You have to actually be around people who probably love cars like you. Because yeah. it's kind of hard to live a dream if uh, everybody hates cars in your circle. <laughs> like, I don't know about you, but I want to get the heck out of that circle if yes. I'm the only one that's passionate about that dream. Same thing yes. with a doctor. If you're a doctor and everybody wants to be, you know, something else, you probably want to change your circle or you just probably want to just double down on what you believe in. So yeah, the power of the yeah. mind is important for people to understand. We build it by choices, whether you think so or not. Exactly. Exactly. It's one tiny choice after the next. That's that's what it comes down to. And it, and it can, if we look at the whole pie, that just becomes overwhelming. If it's like, oh my gosh, I want it, I need to change my whole life or and you change all my thinking, that, that's too much to, to, to undertake. You need to just make it bite size. Okay, I'm going to start my morning with a little bit of gratitude. You know, I'm going to make one different choice right now. And then it's the next choice and the next choice and the next choice. So, so we build that up and people always ask me, like, how do you heal? How do you heal your body? I mean, again, that would take hours to explain, but it just, it took a series of baby steps. Um, and, and it's just how you show up for yourself day after day. And that doesn't mean you don't have hard days. I want to have a lot of compassion. You know, life is hard. <laughs> life is filled with intense, intense challenges. And I laugh because, oh my gosh, I've had my fair share of those, you know, and uh, living through some of that right now. And so, so it doesn't mean 
you know, we, we, we don't like acknowledge, you know, when things are tough and, and it's really important to just like at one tool is developing a positive mindset, training your brain to focus on the good. Another, another important tool to develop is how to feel your feelings. Most of us don't know how to do that. Um, and that's essential. It's essential for being in a healthy body because otherwise every emotion is connected to, to a hormone and that hormone gets released and, and can affect our bodies. And it's built that way on purpose to, to protect us. And yet we live in such a stressful society that we have to know how to process that. So if you're, you know, while you're developing a positive mindset, while you're directing your mind, of what to focus on, you know, you want to be that entrepreneur, you want to have a certain kind of life. Yeah. You, you have to choose what to focus to, you have to visualize it. You have to see it exactly as you're saying, Shemaya. And then also if something comes up, develop the tools to navigate those tough moments, to manage the stress, to process that. So it's not just sitting with you, you know, it's not just like, you're not just carrying it all day. And what did you just say? You said something so powerful that now I'm I'm blanking on it, but it was almost like when you say, when you tell someone like, don't think about, you know, an elephant, all they do is think about an elephant. Oh <laughs> so, yeah. I just, I just saw it in my head. Yeah. Oh, you were bringing up tacos, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you saw that elephant. So most of us, when we're scared of something or worried about something, we'll, we'll just say like, okay, just don't think about it. But then that becomes all we're thinking about. So, <laughs> So it's a perfect example of like, okay, so then what, what do I want to think about? I want to think about my success. I want to think about my health rather than the symptoms I'm, you know, I might be facing today. I want to, I want to focus on that, you know, future vacation I'm going to take when I'm feeling great, when I'm feeling um, energized and, and, you know, or it's the money in the bank, whatever it is, I want to focus on what I want rather than what I don't like in my current situation. Because the, what I'm focused on is what I'm actually creating. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, because, I mean, I'm not trying to plug the show, but that's literally <laughs> how this show was built. Uh, I mean, people just got to have, they have to understand. When this show started, I'm not going to give the whole story because I, I, I do that all the time. I get on rant, so I'm not going to do that. But when the <laughs> show started, like, you talking about no resources? Oh, my God. Like, if you're not built to to last, then that's something you got to focus on. Because we want the success, we want the accolades, we want the, you know, recognition, but we don't want to deal with the weight that comes with it. You mm -hmm. know, there's two uh, different things in life. There's, there's weight of failure and then there's weight of success. You can't choose which one you got to manage. You have to manage both. And when it gets beyond your control, then you have to go to higher power. So God, because people yeah. get weird when people say higher power, but whether you believe in God or whatever <laughs> culture you are, whatever your faith system is, I believe in God personally, but I'm just saying for clarity, there's some things yeah. beyond your control and you have to recognize that once you let go of what you cannot control and you hold in on what you actually can control, life seems to just kind of blossom and things yeah. that are meant for you it literally chases you. I have a saying that uh, if you just hold on to your dream, your dream is going to hold on to you. Mm, I love that. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's easy to let go. I mean, anybody can do that. Like, it's literally seconds. You can let go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anybody can do that. You, you pick your famous person, your famous athlete, your famous movie star, whatever you like, your famous uh, favorite brand. Imagine they quit and let go a long time ago. That's our dreams. Like we, we are living everybody else's dreams, everyone else's vision. And imagine someone quit and they didn't want to invent the traffic light, man. Oh my God, traffic would be terrible. It already is terrible, <laughs> but it would be way more terrible. Like that's the power of our dreams. And we are not yeah. bold enough to believe in them. Then who will? Right. Who will? Yeah, 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 yeah. And we, we have to like, that's why I love, you know, you asked about like, what's my brand? So, I mean, I work with people with chronic illness and I, and I help them heal through the mind body connection, but, or, and what I want my, my brand to be what you just said. Like, I want it to be people dreaming and knowing that they can do anything and knowing that that's why they came, that like you're here to, to create something and yes, hold on to your dream and, 
and and get creative about it and get curious about it and get excited about it and you know what we it's not our job to worry about the how yes we do have to show up we have to put one foot in front of the other but the more you hold on to it it will unfold it will unfold and I'm, I'm amazed as we have this conversation like the the name of your of the this this radio show and I I didn't know, you know, I read about the show. I read about you. I loved, I loved reading your story, how you ended up even doing this. As I told you earlier, before, before we started recording, like I was so inspired by that, that you just leaned in. You're like, okay, there's a message here for me. I got to do this. But I'm like, whoa, I'm, ta- I'm talking about like what you focus on is what you create. And they're like, oh wait, that's the name of your show. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, oh, that's why it's called that. <laughs> yeah. And, and people always ask, why is it refocus? Well, it's simply because uh, no one's perfect and we have to readjust and realign and refocus every day. Like every yes. human being has to basically live this like, excuse the you know visual, but body wash. Like eventually you're going to smell and you got to maintain good maintenance. And I know yeah. that's a little graphic, but that's the best way I can put it. Like it's maintenance. We all need maintenance. If you don't have maintenance, uh. then you basically are being superficial and all about yourself. The other part of the dream is that if it's not bigger than you, it will not succeed. If your dream is only about you, then guess what? It's me, myself, and I. And no one's going to even lie about how they feel about you because they don't, you know, give a blank blank. Wow. But once it becomes bigger than you, then sense of responsibility pours on you like rain. And at yeah. first, it's terrible because you're like, what is this? I didn't ask for this guy. I just wanted to do a show. Like, why you got to make it so complicated? And then he's funny because he's a stand-up comedian. And he'd be like, but you want to be successful, don't you? Yeah. How can you have success if you don't have pain? Pain points are basically exposure to what we need to work on. Not necessary, you know, telling us that we're, you know, going to be a failure. See, if you get in your emotions, then you don't get in the motion, right? You don't move forward. You just stay stagnant until the point you just rot. And I know that's a little graphic, but I'm just speaking on the experience. That's what this show is about. That's what yeah. our guests are about. Like, Kaylee, yeah. if you don't understand the pain points, then how can right. you find a solution? That's the whole point of business, right? We solve problems. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's so, oh, there's so much in what you're saying. It's so powerful. It's, it's interesting because when I was focused on like, oh, wow, I'm just like amazed by how you put this. When I was focused on feeling good, right. Which is the majority of, the, of my life living with illness. So, you know, I was diagnosed when I was 12. So throughout high school, college, it was like, okay, I just, where can I just feel a little bit better? I wasn't very successful. You know, I understood. I, 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 I learned my body, what it needs, how it needs it, but it wasn't, it didn't eliminate disease. I still had symptoms coming up. So it was just like, okay, I just want to try to try to feel a little bit better. When I woke up and said, no, I'm going to heal. I'm not going to live with illness anymore. Like enough is enough. I am done. That was a bigger dream. That dream felt massive and huge. And how on earth am I going to do that? I didn't know how to do it. But it was, it felt like a necessity. The bigger dream was much more successful. <laughs> and, and that's so, so it's so profound to me what you're saying. Like, if the dream isn't bigger than you, it's not going to work. You're not going to, you're not going to succeed. So the big, the dream that was bigger than me is the one that succeeded more than, okay, I would just like to feel a little bit better, you know, get some relief. It was, no, I'm going to heal. I'm going to go do the, what everybody else says is impossible. That's what worked. And the other thing that's so profound about what you're saying totally blows my mind is you're talking about like, you know, you have to see, see what's it, what's the opportunity in the pain. And, and that comes right back to the body for me, because this is, you know, I, I live and breathe this. So I see, I see every metaphor in the body. So you're describing, you know, what sometimes to get to success, we have to be willing to, to go through that pain and to see the lessons and the gift in it. And, when we, when we can realize that what's coming up in our bodies physically is a communication, it's an invitation, it's an opportunity, um, that's when there's opening for healing. When it's just, this is the body doing whatever it wants, beating me up, betraying me, it just furthers dis-ease because now I'm basically in conflict with my own body. When I can see that wait a second, maybe this pain is telling me something. Maybe my body is trying to communicate something. 
and I can learn the skills and the tools to, to understand that communication, then I can actually lean into it. That's when the healing happens. So it's profound to me that the metaphor that you're describing of, you know, living life and being an entrepreneur and, and how you look at pain also applies to, to pain within the body itself. I'm just like blown away by that. Once again, let's have Refocus Radio talking to Kaylee Z. Go to her website, KayleeZ.com. This literally could be a masterclass for another two hours, man. It's crazy. But <laughs> let's do it. one thing I have to say is this, and that is, we talked about this in the green room about the people I interview. I just want to make this statement for people who listen to the show and who will listen to the show in the future. You heard this episode now on accident, man. Like, I'm not trying to be woo-woo, but I'm just saying, like, you really did it. Because I believe our journey in life always gets us to mile markers. And wherever you are in your path, there's ways of things finding you. In my humble opinion, I believe success finds people who are ready. I'm going to say that again. Success mm-hmm. finds people who are ready. So if you're not successful on the level you want to be, maybe it's because you're not yet ready. You know, you got to put that back in the oven and let it cook more so it'd be well done. Or you got to start all over and get a better recipe and then put that together and start again. But my point is this. When you start doing the little things, success just starts to notice you. It just starts to come to you. It, you, you just attract it like a magnet. When you feel like you're just repelling success and you're like, wow, I'm spending so much time on this and it's not going anywhere. Where there's either one or two things. One, you got to re, you know, do what you're doing. Or two, ask yourself, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Because last time I chat when um, so-and-so NBA player plays basketball and shoots those threes and drains those threes, it's not because he's questioning himself, can I hit this three-pointer? No, it's no question. Like it's in the okay. it's in the flow. It's what they do. Like it's it's like when you're doing your natural gift, you ain't got to be taught a whole lot because it's your natural gift. You got to push yourself, but don't get caught up into when I'm gonna get my shot, when I get my next moment, when when I gonna blow up. Because guess what, the person who allowed everyone to fly on those airplanes. <laughs> Imagine they only want to make an airplane so they can fly by themselves. It will be dumb. If a person made the light bulb, only want to make the light bulb for their house to light their house, how dumb is that? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like your gift, you are blessing everybody yeah. around you. Yeah. So if you're not doing that, yeah. aka service, then what are you really doing of value? Maybe that's the secret sauce. Maybe Um, that's the problem. We need to get back to service. Yeah, yeah. And just taking that one step further, Shania, it's realizing that even if you don't think that that your gift is is of service, when you are in you, when you're doing what, what excites you, what you're passionate about, it, it, without you realizing how it will become of service, like the whole world, like it's so easy for us to play small. And, and as for everybody listening, like the whole world is waiting for you to do what you were born to do. And again, it, this is a perfect example. Nobody makes the light bulb for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> so we all need you to show up in that way. That affects the vibration of the entire universe. We all need that. And you might think it's something small and insignificant. But we still need it. We still need it. We still need you to show up as you. And with that said, we can go for another hour on the show, but I can't. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> we're talking to our guest today, Kaylee Z. Go to her website, KayleeZ.com, coach, speaker, best selling author. And she has a podcast, believe it or not. Before we close, plug your podcast. How can people listen to your show? Um, so the podcast is called Lemonade Land. I actually only did a few episodes. I should probably take it off of my PR feed. Um, but the, they're beautiful and inspiring uh, conversations. If you want to go check that out anywhere you listen to podcasts, it's called Lemonade Land. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram, uh, Kelly Zaytuni Official. 
and uh, check out my website. And if you're living with illness, which I hope you're not, um, then when you go to my website, you can click show me how and you can learn about how the mind and body work together. And you can even book a call with me if you want. Um, I can, I'll listen to more of what's going on for you and see if I can offer any uh, insight or guidance. Once again, like I always want to say, thank you, Kaylee Z, for your time. Thank you. So happy to be here.